Hey, everybody. Welcome to Path of the Brush. I'm your host, Rick. Uh, we are here at Hoplite Games in Lansing, Michigan, coming to you live from the store here, where, it's, uh, where we've got some people playing some cool games over in the gaming area just over there. Uh, we got a cool guest today. Our guest is Jeff from the Michigan GT. Hey, come on on board, Jeff, and those other two guys that are always here. Ah, there they are. What's up, buddy? Hi, everyone. How's it going? Good. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, uh, big event this weekend, yeah? Yes, it is. Big event number 11. 11 years. That's wild. It is wild. It's been a long time. A mm -hmm. lot grayer than I was when we started. <laughs> that makes sense. So, uh, we're going to be asking Jeff a lot of questions tonight about the GT, the history of it, uh, its future, and um, maybe some other things that are uh, pertinent to this weekend's uh, tournaments and such. And awesome. uh, Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, we got Mark and Will with us, as always, uh, in the background. But a uh, big question everyone wants to know is, what's everybody painting today? Well, who's, who's starting? Jeff, you're starting. All right, I'm starting. All right. Well, I am uh, painting some, get on the camera here, some Legions Imperialis drop bots. Oh, fun. Nice. Yeah, those are cool. Mini minis, you know? Yeah, they're very cool. Um, the scary thing is, is they're just as detailed as the full-size version. So um, it takes a lot of steady hands to get in, in the nooks and crannies here. One horse hair, you know? You're just like... <laughs> That's it, too. Not kidding. Just, just push the paint in with, like, a... a a or not a Q-tip, yeah. but like a you know toothpick, right? You know, like, a, a, a pipette, <laughs> all right. A little uh, capillary pipette. How about you, Will? What you got on the table today? I am working on some of the Leonine Avatar from Conquest. They're nice, big, awesome okay. centaur yeah. cat hunters. They are not tiny. Oh, nice. Oh, those look cool. Yeah. I've been looking forward to painting these guys for a while. Nice. And how about you there, Mark? I'm painting this here, Blooded from Conquest as well. Uh, way overdue. But yeah, oh. Lord's Blooded here. So this okay. guy, you know, I've got, had him kind of slap chopped up for a while, and he's hit the table a few times, but now it's time to yeah, put some paint on him. Yeah, put some paint on him. And I'm a, working on the dragon from the uh, Army Painter War Paint Fanatics war gamers paint kit which is a new paint kit coming out from army painter where you get a bunch of paints it's like 102 of the uh, fanatic paints and uh this dragon is in the box as well so just kind of cool. awesome yeah, all that's cool find that stuff at there on .com. sweet yep yep a big uh, shout out are to they that. doing a con uh, contest around that too like a painting contest i mean and, uh, yes they are. They are doing a painting contest around this particular model. Oh, uh, share, with, share the details, Rick. Where can we see this model when it's finished? I'm sure it'll be on the Army Painters uh, in, um, Instagram with a bunch of other very, very well-known professional painters. And uh, somehow I got thrown in with this. Well, oh, very cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So that would be cool. It's like yeah, you got to I think I think it's October seventh or something like okay. that. All right. Not a ton of time left, Rick. You better get cranky. No, I know, right? That's right around the corner. Holy cow! Yeah. So got to get some more paint on this plastic, and uh, do a little better than my normal routine of three, making it just good enough for three feet away. Yeah. So. Dare we say two feet away? Two feet, two feet away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dare so, Jeff, with the yeah, Michigan sure. GT, um, yep. tell us about. I know we've had you on before. We've talked about it in a previous broadcast, I think in season one or uh, two. Yep. But because it is this weekend here in Lansing, Michigan, right. what are. Um, how did it come to be? How did you and the other members of the board or. Sure. Um, Cohorts. Yeah, yeah, members of the board is a fine term, sure. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, well, since this is our 11th year, about 11 and a half or 12 years ago, uh, four of the five of us were at a tournament together, and we had carpooled. 
because uh, it was up in Saginaw, which okay. is about an hour and a half from here, for those of you who aren't familiar with Michigan geography. And uh, so on our way home, you know, we had had a good time, but we were also commenting on how the state of Michigan didn't have any kind of quality uh, large event, a multi-day event. Okay. And so we decided that we were going to remedy that and uh, started the process. And, you know, we contacted a local hotel and set the dates up and started Mm -hmm. letting the community and stuff know. And then next thing you know, we had a a 40 person GT. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Which is, which is a grand tournament for anyone out there who uh, doesn't know what GT stands for. It's a, it's a common term in the wargaming industry uh, for a, a large multi-day event. Okay. And what was the uh, size and capacity of the hotel that you guys did this with? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it was at the uh, the Causeway Bay, which I think it had a different name back then even. It's changed hands a couple times since then. Okay. Um, but they had a large um, a ballroom that we were able to rent a quarter of the ballroom. So that was 4,000 square feet oh, wow. uh, for, for, for the nice. first year. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, More, we, we used a lot of that 4,000 square feet, you know, okay. mm-hmm. it was a semi full at that point. And, you know, and this was also, if you can believe it, if you think about it, uh, it was before the days of the, like the fat mat and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. You know, we had gone to Joanne Fabric and we bought a bunch of uh, felt and cut it down to the four foot by six foot dimensions at the which were the table size at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, we yeah, we just rolled felt out onto these folding tables and stuff. It was it was uh, pretty archaic compared to today. You know, and then uh, right. as as products have evolved and and uh, we've done more and more events. You know, we've done a, a very good job of, you know, anything that the GT would have profited for the year rather mm-hmm. than pocketing the money. We've always just rolled it back into the event and made improvements every year. Right. So that's why we have all the fancy mats and the train and all that stuff that we have now. Nice. And yeah. how many years were you at the Causeway Bay? Uh, we were there through until COVID. Okay. So 2013 through 2019, so like the first six years or so. Yeah, okay. that sounds right. Yeah, wow. we were there, and you know, as we went, as we started uh, adding more and more events, because as other people, you know, heard about what we had going on, they wanted to be part of it and include mm-hmm. their games in it and that kind of thing. And uh, we were very open to that as long as um, people were willing to follow through on their commitments. Mm-hmm. Um, but as that happened, we started absorbing more and more of that uh, ballroom of 16,000 square feet. And <laughs> after four or five years, we had the whole thing. And then we started spilling over into their side conference rooms and all this stuff. And, you know, uh, by the end there, we had pretty much taken over, you know, any public space that the hotel had. Okay. And, I, uh, I've been there uh, and I can tell you that it's, it's a decent amount of space for, for it what it is, yeah. you know? I, I, I uh, agree. 16,000 16, square feet is, it's no joke. No, not um, at all. Yeah, it's it's a nice, it was a nice little event. Let's just say that. Um, mm-hmm. Decent sized event. And it was funny, uh, the last year that we were there, the general manager of the hotel pulled me aside. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he goes, well, what do I need to do to get you to do another one of these in the spring? Mm-hmm. Cause you know, our events always in the fall, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, right. I don't know. I, I really don't want to do this twice a year, you know? And sure. he's all, well, he's all, well, what if I give you the entire facility for free? He goes, you guys don't have to pay a penny. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I just said, we just can't do it. And thank you for the offer. We appreciate it. But mm-hmm. you know, I, I really felt it was one of those things where while we could run to a year, I don't think, that a lot of the people would attend both. Like you right. can get someone to travel into town once a year, mm-hmm. but it's a lot more difficult to get them to travel into town twice a year. Sure. You know, especially from any kind of distance. Right. Okay. So you, then COVID hits 
All right. Then COVID and, hits, yep, and, and we're not allowed to have an event in 2020. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, so, yeah, we did. We wanted to. You know, we were close to being able to pull it off, but mm-hmm. the hotel just couldn't just couldn't do it for us. They just right. didn't have the didn't have the personnel, all that stuff. So we had to take the year off. And then uh, we were able to fire off in 2021. Right. You know, and again, it helped us that we're later in the year. Right. A lot of the events yeah. that would normally be scheduled for uh, early in 2021 still couldn't do anything because of all the lockdowns and all that stuff. Right. Um, so actually, uh, the, our 2021 event was actually uh, one of our higher attendance years because <laughs> I think everyone was so eager to get out and do something. Right. You know, that a lot of the, we got a lot of people that, you know, w- maybe wouldn't have normally come to the event, but because they were itching so hard to get to an event. Uh, and we were one of the first events to fire in 2021. Was that the uh, one so, where I first met you guys? I believe so, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think so. <clears throat> that was still Causeway Bay? No, no. That was the, <laughs> at the GT. Right. At, uh, at, the, at the Lansing Center. Okay. Yeah. That was when uh, we all kind of. Came Sorry, together in that too, yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, the Causeway Bay, um, you know, they were running into some massive personnel issues and I couldn't get them to return my phone calls. Oh, and wow. after waiting for a couple of months, you know, to to lock some stuff in, you know, I was just like, you know, we gotta do something else because we can't we can't just sit around and hope, you know, that uh that we eventually get a hold of them and stuff. And so uh, we ended up going ahead and uh, signing a deal with the Lansing Center, which was, you know, a significant upgrade in facility and expense. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we ended up doing that and uh, the rest is history. You know, we've been there ever since. Yeah. And w- what was one of the biggest struggles that you all um, had to over, you know, jump, you know, hurdle you had to get over when you first launched it, uh, back in 11 years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, the biggest struggle is the time and energy put into uh, the tables and terrain. Okay. Uh, at that time, at least at that time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because and we were starting from, you know, nothing. Right. And so, uh, you know, all of our terrain was built completely from scratch. It was a lot of foam mm-hmm. core board buildings and stuff like that yeah uh foam foam hills all those things luckily um at that time you could get a sheet of two inch foam for like 20 bucks instead of the okay. 60 or 80 dollars it is today right um so that was nice <laughs> and so yeah it was a it was a number of weekends getting together and um gluing terrain together and Mm. painting terrain and all that stuff and yeah okay. it took the first couple few years there was a ton of time put into that okay building that foundation of course yeah yes yeah okay what um as far as your expectations did you expect to see this kind of growth over the no the, over this time no not not when we started you know when sure. you started you know you're just hoping to have a 50 person event and, you know, mm-hmm. we were, we were thrilled that we got our 50 people, mm-hmm. you know, and, but, you know, um, you know, we've also had a serious dedication from the start to put on a quality event. Yeah. You know, cause you know, when you're taking money from someone, you feel like you have an obligation to, well, at least I do. I feel like I have an obligation to provide a, an event of quality that they have a good time when they attend. And, mm-hmm. and I think that, uh, you know, because we've, set a pretty good standard for ourselves in, in that regard. Um, kind of a word of mouth, you know, people mm-hmm. hear about, you know, people having a good time in an event and that, and that makes them want to go. And, you know, once you get a few people going, then they start talking about things and then all of a sudden their entire gaming group wants to come. Right. And that's and, always a good thing. Yep. And then just kind of, mm-hmm. just kind of snowballs from there, you know? Yeah. When you were at the Causeway Bay the, the the last time, right before COVID, that was when I was right. just like starting to get. We had a you know, D and D two D and D groups going, right? Oh, cool. Right, and then yeah. um, it was just seeing what else was out there. Really enjoyed like you know board games. And a friend of mine used to be into the War Machine um, yep. boards thing, like 
I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, but he got out of like, he, he never really did the competitive stuff, but he had a bunch of display board things. And like, uh, you know, he made uh, like these giant, um, very detailed, you know, boards and he had a, a big gaming group and he probably had like 10 different armies and they were the old metal ones and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Sure. We nice. played like once or twice and uh, they were getting an X wing and stuff. And then I, I was interested in uh, Legion. Anyways, so I saw that the advertisement was there. So a small group of us went and uh, just walked around as kind of spectators. And I was, okay. you know, that was kind of my first blush into wargaming stuff. And, you know, someone tried to get me to Necromunda and different things. And then <laughs> COVID happened, you know, and like right before COVID, I think I bought the, uh, um, uh, what is it called? One of the, one of the boxes, the, the 40K boxes, um, the okay. dark, what is it? Dark Uprising or Dark? Dark Heresy or no. Dark Uprising was Necromunda. Did you get that? That was a Kill Team box you got, wasn't it? I did get a Kill Team box that got me into it, but there was one more that I got that for some reason I can't think of what it's called. Anyway, Vengeance? No, it's going to drive me nuts. I'll dig it up in a minute here. I don't know why I can't think of it. But anyways, well, I'm sure, I'm um, sure but that got me going good. painting some models like during COVID time. And, oh, then, cool. uh, and then I started, I realized I could do some Kill Team. Um, and so I got like the Kill Team book and like, you know, did a little bit of skirmish stuff there. But then we we talked about when it moved to the Lansing Center, um, mm -hmm. and Bill uh, and I started working together. We had played a few kill team, you know, um, playthroughs and uh, a few games. And he's like, "Hey, I'm helping a couple of buddies out. Do you want to come help?" And so we helped. You know, uh, I think it's when I met Ron and we zip tie we're zip tying the banners together. I met you there for the first time, right? Right, uh, right, right. And uh, yeah, it, it was kind of crazy how it kind of like culminated, you know. And yeah, then I actually cool. I couldn't play. Because I, I was playing a show, I uh, you know acoustic guitar. I was playing at the Lugnut Stadium for this beer fest that was going on. Oh, and then goodness. I said next year I'm going to play. And then so I ended up playing last year. And uh, so, anyways, it, it's been a long time that we've all been hanging out now. It's kind of right. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how uh, War Games does that, right? Brings, yeah, right? brings, brings nerds together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and then it. also. Um, Jeff is an excellent painter and airbrush uh, artist, I would say. Um, yeah, I try. Right? And so you hosted um, that night. Rick, you actually hosted at Thunder Force Studios a little get-together. There was some pizza for all the kind of volunteers and things like that. Um, the cool ones in the know. And then, <laughs> right. um, so we got to hang out a little bit and check out your studio. and It was, it was definitely mm -hmm. very cool. And then a couple weeks later, yeah, Jeff, you put on that airbrush. My wife and I did the airbrush right. class. And I think Kelly, my wife, she she crushed everybody. She was like a pro, right right off. She was using the infinity though, um, but yeah, it was a really cool class, and it kind of got me. I was already into painting and doing things, but it got me to that next level. You know, it was those right, level right. moments. So I appreciate yeah. well, it. Yeah, thank you. Well, I would say that Kelly did better than you because you just talked the whole time, and she actually paid attention. Me, me talking? Get out of here! <laughs> Ridiculous. That never happens. <laughs> Nice, but. yeah. It's been a it's been a, a wild ride. Uh, the, this this core group of uh, crazy crazy folks right here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So with this weekend coming up, uh, what are some things you are excited about, uh, Jeff? Well, I'm excited to see uh, a bunch of people that I don't get to see very often. Yeah. So that's always awesome because you know, uh, as you tend to travel to some of these bigger events you know around the region you know adepticon and you know there's some stuff over in ohio and indianapolis and stuff like that and as you go to these events um you know you meet people and, and start friendships uh just hanging out mm -hmm. talking war gaming and stuff and uh so it's pretty cool that we get a number of people from you know outside of michigan you know to come into our event because it's grown into one of the larger events in the country not not the largest by any means, but, you know, we're probably 20-ish or so, you know, in size of an event. Okay. And uh, so that, that's pretty cool. And then, so you get a lot of people who are willing to come in uh, from a distance, you know, because they're also looking for two fun game days of gaming or three sometimes for some people. And yeah. so, yeah, they'll roll in and it'll be nice to see them and, you know, talk nerd. Nice. The uh, is there anything going on this weekend that is relatively new or um, um, let's see here? Yeah, there's always something new. Um, uh, so this is the first year that the old world will be um, will be played at the GT. Okay, cool. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, the GT started when the GT started, we didn't have Warhammer fantasy battle as one of the mm-hmm. games. Um, it was a 40 K event at first and okay. then it kind of, it kind of grew from there. And then by the time that we were getting to the point that we were adding game systems and stuff, um, the old world was retired or it's Warhammer fantasy battle was retired. Excuse me. Okay. And so, um, then after Age of Sigmar came around, after it was out there for a couple of years, we added that as a game. But now that the old world is is uh, released and it has a following, you know, a lot of the people who are into Warhammer Fantasy Battle have now migrated to the old world. So uh, those guys are back out and nice looking looking for a place to play, and we're happy to uh, fill that that niche. Nice. So yeah, um, I think that that's like our uh, third or fourth largest event at the GT, actually. Wow. Okay. Oh wow. The, the, in in the, its first year, so. Right. And your um, your your two largest are obviously Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar, correct? By a, by a large margin, yeah. Yeah. And Last episode. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I believe those two events are actually sold out for participation for this weekend, right? Yes, they are. Um, wow. Yeah, both are sold out. Um, 40K came in at 132 players, Ooh. and uh, Age of Sigmar is in at 100 players, and that one wow. could actually be, be higher, but we don't have the uh, the terrain and stuff to mm-hmm. to go beyond 100 players this year. So um, okay. with, with this being like the third year in a row that that event has sold out, I will be mm-hmm. – Looking to add maybe twenty seats for next year. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's gonna be one of the biggest in the Midwest for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's not like not as big as Adepticon, but uh, but what is right in the Midwest? Yeah. Is, I mean that's that's the big dog. But other than that, yeah, I don't know of any that are pulling in more than more than a hundred. Right. Okay. That's pretty yeah. wild. It is awesome. Last yeah. episode, we had Creature Caster on, and he was all excited about the old world stuff. Uh, and so, yes. uh, and he played years ago, and uh, he was an ex GW Pat, I guess, and now he's back. So, he that's it's brought you know, oh, drew him back in, huh? Yeah, old veterans back at the table, which is kind of interesting. Well, yeah, sure. You know, there's a number of people who were you know disgruntled that their game they loved was canceled, right? You know, and, and I get it, I understand. Uh, and so, luckily, they weren't one of those whack jobs that lit their army on fire and and now they have a, a game they can play you know yeah 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 100 percent. did that really happen where people like got so yeah, mad there, army? yeah there's there's some social media weirdos that mm. um yeah lit their army on fire when the whole thing happened wait there are people on social media that do things like that to get views that's ridiculous just one or two. <laughs> oh, hey, rick put that match down no, the store is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the cooler things about the GT that I really appreciate is that you guys always have married up with some form of charitable organization uh, and, and do like some raffles and stuff mm-hmm. to raise money for those, for the charities that you guys work with or charity, I think for the, in the past. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, we, yeah, we have uh, two charities that we're working with this year, in which we've all, we've been working with these same two for the last few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first is a local charity to the Lansing area, and it okay. is called the the League of Enchantment. Is the okay. name of of the organization. Okay. And uh, they are a cosplay group that does like superhero costumes. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they uh, they go to children's hospitals and you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a little bit like a, a make a wish type thing where, you know, a little kid is a Batman fan or whatever. And they'll send Batman mm-hmm. to go visit the kid and spend time with them and, nice. you know, hopefully lift their spirits, you know, going through a very tough time. Right. Right, so that's the first okay. one that we work with, and then the nice. other one that we've been working with for even longer um, is called Table War Charities. Okay, and, Table uh, War Table, Charities. Table War Charities. So Table War Charities is um, 
was founded by uh, a gentleman named Todd, and he is one of the owners of the company Table War. Mm-hmm. And they make uh, nice neoprene mats and miniature transport cases and stuff like that. Okay. And it's an uh, autism advocacy charity. Okay. And so what they do is they work with families who have an autistic child. And uh, for whatever reason that, you know, which is not, I'm sure, uncommon, is that the child is struggling uh, getting the resources they need through school. Okay. And so what they do is they have uh, professionals that they, they have that work with them. Mm-hmm. And these professionals understand, you know, what families' rights are when okay. it comes to education, public education, and autism. Okay. So what they will do is they will uh, be basically uh, an advocate for the family uh, in dealing with the school in getting the um, the services that the child needs to excel in school or, you know, to... I don't even know if Excel is the right word, but to just get the be, most be, out of school. Yeah, be successful at their level. There you go. Yes. Yeah. And okay. so a, lo- a lot of, uh, you know, parents with autistic children, you know, it's mm-hmm. so overwhelming to, to have a child with special sure. needs. And uh, and a lot of people just don't know, you know, what they're allowed to ask for and what they're not allowed to ask for. Right. And so, and so by having these professionals, um, you know, th- that are assigned to work with these different families, you know they can work with the schools, and, okay. um, and and get the get the services that they need for their kids to be successful. Okay, great. You know, and from what I understand too, like a lot of schools uh, aren't allowed to offer things. Mm-hmm. They're they're only allowed to to give things when they're asked for. That's very strange. It's very it sounds very strange, right? <laughs> and I, I don't have first hand experience, so I can't speak as right. a an expert on the topic, but from having right. conversations with Todd on this, uh, that's mm-hmm. the, that's the gist I, I have received from him. Okay. And so, you know, Todd is a very, a very successful individual, a Silicon mm-hmm. Valley professional in his past. Right. And right. that he's a, he's a very sharp guy. Yeah. And uh, this is something that he was, you know, having some issues with as he was navigating his child's experience with autism Mm -hmm. and just kind of thought, you know what, it would be really nice to have access to someone who knows how to navigate this. And so, you know, he, he saw a, a a gap in the, in the industry and Mm -hmm. is working hard to fill it, to help other people out who are going through the same things that he went through. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. And put put a yeah. table war charities down below so everybody can check it out at home as well. So awesome, thank you. Very cool. So, besides having a philanthropic philanthropic uh, arm to the GT, um, mm-hmm. what are some things that you have? Have you, have you guys done anything throughout the year uh, th- uh, between the GTs to um, accentuate or, or uh, build a community that is going to be a part of that? Yeah, um, I try to attend multiple events per year, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, to promote our event and, you know, and just kind of be an ambassador for the event Mm -hmm. that I run at the GT, you know, and and we have we have some other people who who do the same thing, Um, you know, in our earlier days when we were a much smaller event and and really uh, pushing to really grow. Mm -hmm. Um, we were doing multiple, um, what we would call a primer event, you know, in, okay. in the off, in the off season. Yeah. Okay. And that would be like, you would do like a small event at a local game store. Whoops. Stores to, oh, to, to, to TO, to TO events. And, uh, mm-hmm. we would come in and we would run the event for them. And then, mm-hmm. uh, we would, you know, promote our event at the same time. Nice. They're kind of saying, you know, hey, if you had a good time here, you know, you'll right. have a really good time at the GT kind of thing. Right. Of course. That's awesome. And I, I can say that since uh, Hoplite's been opened, you know, you and some of the others have been here being champions uh, and ambassadors mm-hmm. to the different games as well. You know, I've, I've seen uh, Bill coming in doing some battle tech stuff. Yep. You know, getting more battle tech uh, people. Right uh, in the community, you obviously with AOS and Conquest and Song of Ice and Fire. Mm-hmm. 
and Spartacus, but that's just a board game. <laughs> <laughs> you love that Spartacus. No, that game it's is a great. great game. It really is. Yes. Um, so the, I, mini, you the, know, mini, the minis could use some work in that game, but the game itself is great. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, the uh, you almost want to take um, what is it? Uh, Arena Rex miniatures and just yes. swap them oh, out. I, oh, that would be great. Right. Um. So you've got all these things going on. Mm-hmm. You've been around eleven years. Right. Who are some of the Who are some of the sponsors that you've had in the past, or maybe even this year? You'd like to give a little shout out to that. Sure. Uh, you're, you know, that it's helped help make it a successful uh, recurring event. Well, you know, obviously our number one sponsor is Hoplite Games. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously. Obviously. Um, yeah. No, I mean, we've, without our sponsors, man, this event just wouldn't be anywhere close to what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the sponsors have stepped up year after year and really see mm-hmm. – and. I really give them credit in that they, they can see the value in sponsoring local events that are in their, you know, in their market, basically, you know, um, yeah. which is really nice to see. You, you know, it doesn't usually take a lot of convincing to get, you know, some of these sponsors on board. You know, you can show them what we got going on, show them how many people are going to be attending, you know, and, and, and it's extremely um targeted marketing right i mean these are the exact people that they want to be talking to so from that aspect it's not a a difficult pitch but you know that being said you know their funds are are limited you know they don't have a million dollars to throw around so you know we also really appreciate that we are one of their choices of a place to Mm -hmm. spend those advertising dollars right and it's and it's with those these sponsorships that we're able to give out the great amount of prize support that we give out i mean mm-hmm. our our goal is to, to is to hand out in prizes at least 50 percent of the gate value and mm-hmm. uh a lot of years we're even able to get into that 80 to 100 percent range nice. uh, which is ex- which is extremely impressive you know so yeah. uh, a lot of people walk away with great prizes from our event and we're, we're happy to mm-hmm. give it out but because of that it's it's because of the sponsors um, right. Some of the, the, the big sponsors are not big sponsors, but sponsors that are very worth noting. Um, so our, our longest sitting sponsor is AFK Games. Yeah, great store. And uh, yeah, nice little store down in, uh, in Holt, Michigan here in the Lansing area. They've been extremely supportive you know, over the years. I think they've been with us since I think year two. Okay. Uh, so that's been fantastic. It's been a nice long time. Um, Evolution Games, also here in Lansing, is a sponsor. They've also been with us since the early days. Uh, and both of them, as well as Hoplite Games, will be uh, in attendance with a booth this year, which is awesome. Nice. Yeah. And it's nice to, and nice to be able to provide that that extra you know, service to the sponsor themselves to get them uh, out in front of our customer base in person, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Um, you know, uh, the Army Painter is a, is a big sponsor that we have this year. They're going to have a booth as well. Uh, also sending one of their um, their studio painters, I think is for lack of a better term, um, mm-hmm. and uh, Caleb Wisenbeck and, and Kat Jackson are coming out, and they're going to be right. in the booth and you know willing to uh, give painting tips to anyone who's interested in, in chatting Caleb up. Um, mm-hmm. I've taken some classes from Caleb over the years, and he is a wealth of a well of knowledge. And uh, if you can glean a couple of tips from him while you're sitting with him it would be time well spent. I can tell you that. Um, Warlord games will be in attendance. They've been with us f- for quite a while now. Uh, they do a lot of uh, historical games. Uh, so civil war, um, pre not prehistory, but uh, like Roman times and yeah, all those, those cool historical games. Um, yeah which is really neat um, because we, we do have uh, like a bolt action event. So they, they sell, in fact, they make bolt action. Um, So that's really cool. Um, Mm -hmm. Parabellum games is a sponsor this year. They're the the maker of the game conquest, which is a cool game. Both will and Mark are painting conquest minis as we speak. Uh, I'm going to leave some out. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, we just have a ton that are awesome Mm -hmm. and, 
we like I said, yeah. we really appreciate everyone's support, and I can't say enough about all of them. They've been they've been right. fantastic. Hey Jeff, I'm on your page right now. Uh, yeah, you said AFK Games, Warlord Games, Acropolis Games, Evolution Games, and uh, Dark Imperium was the big box that I bought for the first time, and I bought that at Evolution Games. So shout out, gotcha, uh, gotcha. <laughs> Elderwood Academy. Um, make those cool boxes, which I actually have one right here. I don't know if you can see it, right? Which I won in a raffle. Cool. Uh, some cool dice. Yeah, the, the Army Painter, of course. Um, Elric's Hobbies, which, uh, you know, great hobby store. And they've got all those, like, I've bought so many of those resin bases, you know. Yeah, they do the resin bases, right. Over the years. Uh, Mantic will be there, right? Uh, um, Mantic will not be in attendance this year. Oh, they actually won't be there. Okay, but, but, they, were... but, they, but they are sponsoring. Okay, perfect. They're, just not, they're not, not present, that's all. Yep, and you said Table War, right? And then we got Parabellum, right. like you talked about. Uh, Ruin Forge Gaming. Ruin Forge, yeah. Yep. And then we got Gray Matter Gaming, so those guys are out of Troy, and they do some great mats. Yep. Uh, we got K&T oh, can't, for, can't forget Perkwood Designs. Oh, yeah. Perkwood Designs. Oh, Perkwood. And then uh, Baron of Dice is on there. So you got the, the old Baron. Yeah, Baron of Dice is new this year. Uh, so That's great. <laughs> yeah, they're a new sponsor as well as Perkwood. Mm -hmm. um, Rune Forge uh, has sponsored us before, but I was uh, lacked some detail last year, and somehow they did not get on the big banner, which I felt bad about. So I'm going to give them an extra shout-out right here. So thank you to Rune Forge. Um, yeah. And then nice. you know, we got a number of uh, – of companies that came in at a, at a smaller sponsorship level as well. Yeah. Very cool. But it's always cool when you, when you're able to, like you said, work with some really cool companies that obviously this is, this event is in their wheelhouse and it also lends some legitimacy to, you know, the event as well. When you see oh, Warlord yeah. and uh, Parabellum and all of those 100%, guys. 100%, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and one thing I will say too to uh, anyone out there listening, you know, it's like, you know, when you want to attend an event like this or or any event that you're going to, you know, pay attention to those names that are put up mm -hmm. as sponsors of the event and give them your business, because, you know, those are the people who they're giving their hard earned dollars to support the event, mm -hmm. you know, and because they care about you, you know, they care about their customers and they care about, you know, you know, trying to step up and and show the community that they care and the community in my opinion should uh reciprocate and and show them that they appreciate these sponsorships yeah. and, and that they're they're participating and not only in the retail side of things but in the hobby side of things as well yeah for sure that's that's a good shout out right there for sure i think uh next year try to get a a, a glue sponsor oh that's a good <laughs> Good idea, well, Rick. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking about that. Is like, because you stopped by the store today and you're like telling me, Rick, you should bring some, make sure to bring some any glue we got. And I was like, crap. <laughs> Sold out. Uh, yeah. Because it's, you gotta call it's one of the bigger things. Yeah. Right. Well, you yeah. know, and also when you get to events like that, people don't bring glue. And then right. inevitably something breaks, you know, and they're just wanting mm -hmm. to, you know, get it glued back together. Yeah. I think Will goes down as the most broken models <laughs> in a GT. <laughs> yeah. I just expect it. Like I'm gonna need to go and like anytime I go to a store, I'm gonna need to sure. glue something back together. Right. right. Yeah, that's just how it goes. I yeah. don't feel bad, Will. You're not alone. Yeah. All right. So, there's a painted drop pod for you guys. Well, let's see. Nice. nice. And what yeah, scale is that? Oh, I think it's um uh, eight millimeter. Wow. Yeah, it's it's small. But you know what? It looks so good when you're playing the game on the table. It's a it's a very awesome looking game. What's the duration of this game, roughly? How long does it take to play? Yeah. Yeah, once you have the rules down, it's like a, a standard AOS or 40k game. You know, three oh. hours. Yeah. Okay. You just get a yeah, epic some epic scale stuff, right? Right. Yeah, it's just a smaller scale. Stuff dies super fast. Okay. <laughs> nice. So just scrape it off. Well, Bring out the hook. Um, if, if, so, if you're me, at least. So uh, what are... I've been victim to this, and we've talked about it a few times, and you always make fun of me. What are some do's and don'ts prior to the tournament? <laughs> Waiting till the last minute to paint is my don't. Um, 
Yeah, painting in your hotel room is a don't, Mark. I, I stayed up till 3 a.m. the first time I went to uh, where was it? Adepticon. No, it was the AFK, it, wasn't it? It was the Motor Detroit City Mayhem. Mayhem. Oh, <laughs> it was all of them actually. Uh, Motor City Mayhem, <laughs> and I was, I was up doing my bases for my Zinch guys, which they turned out sweet. I'll, I'll pop these guys out, but I was like, I need to uh, last minute base them all. Like I was gonna actually get extra points, and I got a few, but not like worth staying up till 3 a.m. And this, <laughs> I, by the second day, fifth game, I was a zombie, you know, and I like couldn't remember anything. But you know, this was like. Um, the, the first guy here, right? The Lord of Change. And so I was after doing some airbrushing and things. And so I was trying to do this, like the little racing stripe around the outside, stayed up super late for that. And uh, everyone was making fun of me. And then yeah. Yeah. Time, last year is when you were, you came into the Airbnb and you're like, you know, can't believe you're painting right now. And I was literally glazing these little dudes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Moving up, And I was doing some like varnish glaze varnishing, um, they turned out sweet. You printed those little bases for us, but uh, yeah. yeah, don't do that again. I mean, ultimately, we were just sitting around not doing anything. I was doing some fine little touch-ups of these sure. guys. But, yeah, that well, was less learned. Not doing that again. And actually, my wife put a ban on it. <laughs> good, good for Kelly. Good job, Kelly. I approve. Yeah, I had one year where one of my teammates did the same thing, and it just super detracted from my enjoyment of being at the event mm -hmm. uh, because you know we were at that time, you know, crammed in this motel or hotel room instead of actually, you know, talking to people and hanging out and that kind of thing. And at that point in time, I was just like, never, never again is this going to happen for me, at least, you know, I'm not working on this stuff ever again. So, yeah. So I try to make sure that I build enough time into my prep that I hit my deadlines and I can have a nice, fun trip out with the guys. Yeah. Smart. Will it's a rookie, mis rookie mistake, Mark. Rookie mistake. I know. I, know. <laughs> um, I, I like to make sure that I've got uh, snacks, juice, like stuff to stuff to keep me going throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Using your brain uh, yeah. takes a lot of calories, and that's a lot of using your brain. Yeah, I usually just uh, take food off other people's plates. <laughs> They're they're distracted with the games that are going on. So that's it, right. Uh, that's right. Track. I mean, Will, you are the uh, amongst the guys. You're the con mom for sure. You know, I, I got to make sure everybody's okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great. So, someone has to play that role, right? And because uh, it's funny, it's like at Adepticon, you'll swing by the booth wherever I might be and be like, snack, juice, drink, something. <laughs> you okay? You doing all right, buddy? You know, always looking out. Always looking out. And that's awesome. I can't help it. <laughs> With camaraderie. No, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I always pack enough for uh, people who are working the booths because that's that, that can be long and thankless work and, and you can thank it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and the person across from me that, that sets a tone that we are not, while we are, uh, while we're playing against each other, it doesn't have to be antagonistic. Right. I want to get the right. best game out of this person. Right. And I hope they sure. want the best game possible out of me. Yeah. Oh, that's, is that what I've been doing wrong all this time against you, Will? <laughs> <laughs> Will yeah. shoot. All right, I'll work on that. Gen yeah. Will generally gets like best sportsman um, many years in a row doing doing things, you know, like awards for just being an all-around good guy. Yeah. Um, what the heck is that? <laughs> I know. Sometimes you can have like some normal conversations. I have had some weird conversations where like, your opponent is just talking their rule set at you about like what's really cool about this guy is he can do you uh, this and that and this and that and you're just like I can barely remember my rules right now. Quit to tell me about your rules, you know? Yeah. Uh, yes. I I know what you're saying, Mark. And a lot yeah. of that time, I will just uh, cut that person off. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. Pol politely, you know, yeah. and just say, you know, I, I appreciate the information, but there is a zero percent chance I'm going to absorb any of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just might. Yeah, nice. it's, it's not uh, everybody. Because I will, I will not absorb that. Yeah, no, I won't it's absorb a that distractor ball. too, you know, um, which is funny. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to throw ten thousand things at you at once, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like everybody, for the most part, and you know, 
the grand tournament is war gaming centric, right? I mean, there's some other oh, things, yeah. but it's, it's absolutely primarily that. Um, right. Everybody there generally is to have a good time, except yes. for the 40k guys. Those guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are even there to have a good time, Mark. Yeah, Most no, they're they're there to a good time, and right. everybody playing they play in them are kind of you know in the same. They're drinking the same sure. juice, you know what I mean? Yes, so, yes. I, I um, will say this uh, as a a, a preparatory tool. Um, I think it's important that you establish the reason why you're there with yourself uh-huh. before you're even going to go. Right. So Smart. am I, yeah. am I going to have some really hardcore competitive type games that I really want to you know, prove to myself how good of a general, how good at this game am I, re- I really am, or am I just going to meet new people, have a good time, and and just have fun right? yeah, and learn a little bit right you're gonna learn yeah, sure sure and learn a little bit because you know i mean it's also important to recognize that there's only one person that's going to win so you know there's 99 99 people who come to the age of sigma event are going to walk away not winning the, you know, right. the whole thing you know there's only going to be one winner um and you know and that could be you you know if if you're a good player and you put the time and the practice in and all that stuff you know it's a possibility Right. Um, but but there's also a really good possibility that it's not going to be you. Yeah, you know, it's most likely so, going to be Mike. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and it might be Mike. Yeah, Mike's a good player. Mike Roush, he's a very good player. <laughs> but if if your purpose of going is to enjoy yourself and have a good time and meet new friends, then I really think it's important to point that out to your opponent mm-hmm. uh, as you're walking up that first game. You know, and just say, you know, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm Jeff. I'm, you know, I'm fairly new to this game or I'm a casual player or whatever, you know, and just say, you know, I'm just really excited to get in, you know, five games over these two days and just have as good a time as I can have, you know, and it's just like, you know, if I miss any rules or anything like that, just, you know, let me know and I'm happy to, you know, we can correct them or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just here to have fun. Uh, And then, in, in, you know, if that's the reason why you're there, don't be dishonest about it. Uh, if you're there to to crush skull, skulls and and claim souls, then so be I, it. I, I don't know. I don't think I would necessarily say that, but just say you right. know, I really, but say I really enjoy competitive play. Yeah, right. Um, you know, and then once that that is established, um, that will set the tone for the game, right? And right. and you can have competitive play. And still be you know fun and mm-hmm. and sportsmanlike and have a good time, but if you're there for competitive play and your opponent is just there to have a good time, then that would let the competitive player know that he doesn't need to crush skulls, right? He just needs to win the game, and right. then you know try to have it as positive. Smile experience. once in a while. Yeah, smile once in a while. There you go. Jacob, we're talking for talking to you. Just smile once in a while. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So I think that, that having that conversation and, and you know setting that tone, whatever that tone is for you, um, mm-hmm. is a smart conversation to have before the game, and it can go a long way to um, alleviating some you know some sour grapes. Yeah, that's that's a great advice. Yeah, it's great advice. Uh, I just want to say howdy to Dodge if he's still watching. Uh, we appreciate you joining up with us. Um, and yeah, woohoo, painting, he says. <laughs> we are painting. Right. Yeah. Dodge, I believe, if it's the Dodge, I think it is, has been to the store. He's came for paint night. So Nice. Yeah. When's paint night? When, when is paint night at the store, Rick? It's every Thursday starting at 6 p.m. Cool. Yeah. So, which of my paints should I bring for paint night here? Yeah, yeah, for paint night there. You don't have to bring any. We have oh, a I don't full have to stock. Bring any? That's you right. We have all full, the paints. We have a full stock of paints oh, that people can use from multiple for, different brands for and, free. Uh, yeah, for free. Oh shit! And oh, if they're, if someone shows <laughs> up that doesn't have a, a model that they want to paint that's in from their own collection, uh, they get a free model. Um, from one of from our our vast stores of Lucy's, as I like to call them. <laughs> nice Lucy's. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that sounds yeah. like a good time, Rick. Yeah. It's so, super how many fun. How, how many people are normally showing up on a on a paint night? Currently, we're getting between thirty and forty people. 
Wow. Yep. Uh, I've been there um, many paint nights now, and it's mm -hmm. it was hard to find a seat last week. Yep. Okay. But it, it was awesome. There's buckets of paint for people. Um, there's been some kids that have been been reoccurring too. There's this one mm -hmm. little guy. He's got to be like five, six years old, and then he was mm -hmm. so excited about that beholder that he painted two weeks ago. It's fun to okay. fun to chat with the little guy about the stuff he's been working on. That's fun. That's awesome. Super yeah, the cool. community the community show outs for that event uh, has has been really really nice, and um, also seeing the people that are like you said recurring uh, attendees, um, and how they've progressed from when they first started coming here to where they are today. Right there, right. there's already been vast improvements in some of the paint that uh, people have been showing right. me the, at the end of the, the night. The quality of their finished miniature. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it's truly so, a community, you know, yeah. it's like I've been in there and people are setting up and it might be a family that, I don't know, they, they don't have something to do. Maybe they can't afford to go to the movie or something. Right. And they, mm -hmm. they come in and then they're, they're having fun and, you know, their kids are, are learning some new skills and it, it's truly like a community and it's all range. Like you're saying, well, it's from five to uh, how old are you? How old are you now, Rick? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> five to 50, brother. I'm 50. Uh, old enough to know better. Yeah, but right? we, I mean, we, we have some elderly folks that come in here too, in their you know 60s, 70s. Um, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is a full range of not just ages, but also talent. Um, we've got some really good painters, and then you've got me, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give yourself enough credit. Last so, Rick, week I... there was a little girl that was sitting right across from me that while we were painting and she like after she had finished putting the blue on all of her mm -hmm. stuff then they started having an adventure right in front of me and that was like that was normal yeah. yeah oh man <laughs> mm -hmm. did you have some you want to say there I was Jeff? Gonna say, yeah I was gonna say, so i've really enjoyed the new lights that you, you got in the painting area of the store oh yeah that's the premier spot right there yeah oh, i bet i bet there's uh, those are the hot seats that you have to mm -hmm. get there early to, to secure those spots yep uh, I think you have one right there on your camera. I do. I do right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, the, the new game envy light and it's, it's, I gotta say it's pretty fantastic. It is. Um, for sure. I'm a little upset that I did not buy two because really? I think I, I, yeah, I think I could have, uh, doubled up. I've, I have found that since my eyes have aged, I like light a lot more when I'm painting. Yeah, I, I find also, I have contacts in right now, but sometimes viewers, you've seen me with glasses because I'm blind as a bat. But when I have light in the right spot, right, uh, yeah, I can see so much more. It's like you're at the restaurant with the menu, you know? Yeah, right. You'll learn Absolutely. about this in about 20 years. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dodd says, I'm still watching, just painting up my last piece in the competition for the Michigan GT. And yes, it's the same oh, Dodge. Super cool. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, he says, seeing the kids is so exciting. All right, so Dodge, I got to ask you: Are you playing in any other events, or are you just doing the painting competition? I, I, I'd like to hear what you have to say there, because uh, yeah. I've noticed that we've had a a number of attendees, it's, and it's not a huge number, but it's a uh, more than a couple that did not enter any events and strictly bought uh, tickets to enter the painting competition. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, yeah, that that, that, cool. that that thing is becoming a thing on its own. And I'm really hoping that, that that continues to grow. Yeah. Um, and we have a, you know, I mentioned that Caleb from Table, uh, from Army Painters coming. He's going to be mm -hmm. our guest judge. So that should be fun. He's, he's a golden demon winning painter himself. Amazing. So I think he knows what he's talking about when it comes to painting. <laughs> maybe That's a little true. bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Right. <laughs> Pulling that kind of talent, you know, as a judge is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, well, it's just, it is, it is very amazing. Uh, and that's, I'll, I'll give all credit to, to Kat and Army Painter on this one to, uh, yeah. to get him out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it, it's pretty cool to see these individuals that are coming in that are industry known and uh, like, they're just coming in because they, they love the hobby themselves so much. But obviously you've, you've fostered a really good relationship with them which uh, translated into this awesome uh, occurrence. Right. This is yeah. the first, 
But this isn't the first time they've been at the GT. Uh, this is the first time they've been at our GT. It has. It has not been the first oh. time they've been to, to Lansing. Oh. Um, I thought yeah, this they, was they had been here for the GT previously. No, no. This oh. is the first time they've attended the Michigan GT. Uh, oh. And the previous t- trips they've had out here was strictly to do some uh, painting classes. Oh, um, okay. And that was in uh, 2018 and 2019. They came back to back years and, right. uh, and did some painting seminars with us. And they were, I can't say enough about how great those classes were. Right. Um, I, I just learned so much. And they're, they're airbrushing classes, you know. So if you're not into airbrushing, it probably wouldn't do you much good. Um, but if you are into airbrushing, I mean, that was. Mm-hmm. That was 16 mm-hmm. hours, extremely well spent, I got to say. Right. Uh, Dodge says, I am not playing in any of the games. I have no idea how to play Sigmar, 40K, Warcry, etc. even though I have a wide array of those models. I plan to okay. just take the time to paint the whole time. Okay. Nice. Well, very cool. Then I'm happy to hear it, Dodge. That being said, I would love to see you at Hot Play sometime learning how to use those miniatures in a game. <laughs> really just like pushing around and make noises well, I mean any, anyone can do that Will that's what I do especially with uh, Song of Ice and Fire rawr giant kick dog <laughs> <laughs> oh no not another wolf hey those dang wolves gray wind again right he's gonna take down my war mammoth I feel like that's uh, one of those memes of like what people think you do with your models, and it's like pew 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 chink chink chink. What like right. you, know, you actually do, and it's just like chucking a bunch of dice, and it's <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, you know what you really think you're doing, and it's like you know some heroic yeah. from Lord of the Rings or something like that. Right. Well, you know, I, I can't help if I'm playing a 40k game to make pew pew noises, Mark. I just can't. Help oh, okay, it. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> nice. That's what that we said there. Unruly, unruly 40k player. <laughs> no. You're already there with the dudes. You might as well make the noises. That's exactly right. I mean, and you're controlling a giant tank or something, right? It oh, has yeah. to make some kind of noise. It just doesn't sit there quiet. It's fun. right when you're pushing it. It's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's absolutely true, and you know the Age of Sigmar might have the edge with uh, models over 40k, which I think it does. Um, but 40k definitely has the edge with war noises that you make while playing the game. Oh. <laughs> daka, 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 yeah, daka. a lot of daka. All of that. The um, so another cool thing about the GT uh, that was a surprise to me because I didn't even realize it was something that Adepticon does is if someone wants to just come to that show, right. And just like walk around, watch the events going down or shop right. with the vendors. There is no ticketing. It's free. It's free. Absolutely. Correct. Um, you know, and the real, the main reason that we're doing that is because um, honestly, a lot of people aren't going to come and just spectate. Right. I mean, right. we might collect, we might collect, a couple hundred bucks, maybe 20 people would be interested in, in spending $10 to come and watch other people play games. Right. And so there really isn't a lot of um, revenue to be generated by charging a spectator fee. Mm -hmm. So we would rather, instead of collect that $200, we would much rather make it free Mm -hmm. and have those people come in and check out all the cool stuff that's going on a, because maybe they would want to come back next year as a player Right. Um, or B, you know, spend, spend some money with our awesome sponsors and vendors. Yeah. You know, it's just another another value add we can give to our sponsors that are there in person, mm-hmm. you know, and, and maybe get some extra people in there to spend a couple bucks. You know, it's like, hey, and mm-hmm. I say this all the time. It's always free. To, it's free to come in. All we ask mm-hmm. is that you consider spending some money with our sponsors. That's First it. One's free. You see this thing here? What is this? Everybody knows what this is. Is that a book? It's a book. Okay. Nice. It's Age of Sigmar Core Rules. Very um, cool. So when I was a spectator, I was tooling around, and it was uh, one of the last days. And yeah, AFK was like, hey, I'll give that to you for 
twenty five bucks or whatever. Oh, there you go. Because um, it, it was broken out of a big box and you know whatever. Sure. And uh, I was like, great. And then I was playing Kill Team at the time, and then lo and behold, next year, you know, playing some Sigma. Mm. There you go. So yeah, that's yeah. that's great. I, I yeah, love but, that. Great vendors out there. Yeah, it's super cool. It's it's one of the great things, and you know, also you know, community members are also usually very uh, interested in growing the community, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, if you're ever in a game store or in an event like that, and you want to know information about what they're doing. Just start a conversation. They'll be happy to talk your ear off about what they got going on. Yeah, exactly. Because it happens cool, a lot. Cool is, is my character, huh, Rick? Yeah, nothing's cooler than the character that you're playing right now in your D and D campaign. That, that's right. I'll, or I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Or the um, the other thing that's really cool is, and kind of uh, speaks what you just said is. <clears throat> like, here at the store, we currently have a 40k um, uh, narrative yeah, narrative campaign going on, and uh, so many people are interested in doing that because it is a casual play, and it uh, you know the, the 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 lore that we're throwing into it, and by we I mean the community okay. because you know they uh, Bruce and right. Sammy and Sarah have been killing it. And yeah, it's really uh, spiking our player base around that game system, which hopefully next year that would also translate into maybe more players at a competitive level, right? Or we also have a narrative 40K session at the GT. Right. You know, so if you're one of those people that just isn't super interested in uh, competitive play, you know, we mm-hmm. do have other events that are more narrative driven. Now, they're not as common as competitive right. events but mm-hmm. um you know that is something we have fostered for you know especially for a 40k right because there are a number of people who love their 40k miniatures but aren't necessarily uh you know rabid competitive mm-hmm. players so they would much rather you know tell a story for the weekend rather than um, right. strictly uh, being competitive you know and that's uh very similar to what we do also with our our horse heresy events you know, which is, right. if people aren't familiar, Horus Heresy is um, historical Warhammer. So <laughs> it's a, I've, never, I've never heard it called that. Yeah, it's, That's it's, a it's, great it's, name for it. It's future history. <coughs> That's hilarious. It takes yeah, place in it, it, 30K yeah, it, it, timeline, right? It, it, it takes place 10,000 years before the 40K timeline, right? And it's it's basically the story of, or uh, you know, playing games in the, Civil War of the Imperium, uh, which is the the human empire in Warhammer Forty Thousand. Okay, that's hilarious, isn't it? Though, yeah, I think it's that that it's a historical forty k thirty k narrative. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, you know, you're, you're playing in the story of of Warhammer of Warhammer Forty Thousand in the betrayal. During the time, yep, of... yep. During the time of the betrayal, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, we should probably shout out some other folks. Let's do it. Who you want to shout out? All right, so let's shout out um, Tabletop Gurus as one of our our sponsors here, with uh, which is like a news and entertainment channel that Mark has put together. You can check that out at uh, tabletopgurus.com. And also the Army Painter, who is our exclusive paint sponsor for the show, with their Army uh, Painter War Paint Fanatic uh, line and Speed Paint 2.0. So, all good things there. A big shout out to Hoplite Games, Michigan GT, and also to uh, Gen Con TV and Gen Con itself. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Obviously, we wouldn't be here on Gen Con TV if they didn't. Uh, Approved, absolutely right? absolutely so we appreciate all of them and we would love it if those of you watching would be so kind as to hit that heart hit that bell so that you get notifications and you follow us here at gen con tv so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing content that's being provided here uh, <clears throat> excuse me obviously <laughs> path of the brush is awesome but there's amazing content creators beyond us that are making so much good stuff here on the channel that it, you might find some other cool stuff that might 
scratch an itch for you. Um, and you can check out the calendar of uh, programming just below the, the uh, screen here um, in, in the uh, text in comments below and or on the uh, Gen Con TV or go to GenCon.com and hit the Gen Con TV um, hyperlink there and it'll show you all the different programming as well. Oh, that's super cool, Rick. Super cool. Yeah, all the good things. So, yeah. And we'll, we'll give Game Envy a shout out too because we love Kit and all those guys. So, Game Envy. Thanks, Kit. Thanks, Kit. We love you. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it, and again, just like sponsorships for the GT, they, they're, they're what really uh, help make it happen, right? Absolutely. And all the, yeah. Plus all, all the other cool folks that are going to be on the program this, this season. We've, got, we've had some really cool uh, miniature companies already. And we've got some really cool ones coming up. So, yeah, we Sweet. did our we did our Gen Con recap, right? And we had Rising oh. Rising Empire, which was pretty amazing. All right, um, Ridge Ridge Gilly. Ridge. What a name! What a what a straight up cowboy name. His background story was pretty cool, like the Cirque du Soleil trainer, and then you know, um, yeah, strength trainer for UFC. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. he did all sorts of stuff. Oh. I mean, him and his wife started yeah. this. Um, we had a uh, creature caster on last week. Mm -hmm. Today, we've got the Michigan GT. Um, on the 25th, we got Eldritch, Eldritch Foundry. Yeah, very cool. Uh, we have a mystery guest on October 2nd, so beware. Uh, we got Rick Hall very on. <laughs> um, we got Mantic Rick Hall coming on. Um, on the 23rd, we got Adam Apple Games. Adam, Adam Apple. Um, we got Band Rider Games on October 30th, which is a perfect, uh, you know, yes. foreshadowing so for Halloween uh, action. Mm -hmm. So, talk so, about Final Girl again, Final Girl stuff. Yep, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that game's uh, hot, man. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Digging it, people are digging it. Yeah, for sure. And we got uh, November 6th, we've got a mystery guest, November 13th, Modiphius, we got April. Uh, nice. yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, November 20th, Mystery Guest. December 4th, Mystery Guest. December 11th, we got Jennifer from Free Blades. Uh, oh, nice. Her at Gen Con. All uh, right. Yeah. And then December 18th, to round out uh, right into uh, really our last episode into the Christmas uh, spirit with Sarah's table. So do a little crossover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nice. Sarah's such a great person. Yep. He is so funny. And uh, yeah, she's, she's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited. You're gonna try, probably try to cr talk us into doing a a, a, a RPG on her channel. Fun. Yeah, we'd have to get oh. elf ears though, because she's got the elf ears, you know. Yeah, yes. Uh, but I I I get a little like apprehensive as to like, ooh, what RPG is she gonna want to have us come on and play? And I'm like, because uh, the last time I played on uh, her channel was um, a game called The Excellence, which was hmm. super funny. Yeah. Was it excellent? Oh, it was absolutely excellent. But uh, it would be interesting to play that that game with you two. <laughs> okay. Why? Why is so? the aristocrat? Why so? You all take. We all take on the roles of princesses. Oh yeah, this is the maple syrup thing you keep talking about. Do yeah, you like oh, the I maple syrup? syrup? I do or like the maple syrup. Thing. Yeah, but I like the maple syrup. I like the maple syrup. I like the maple syrup. It's so yummy of good finds. <clears throat> yes. Oh, uh, Dot says, I will probably put together a spearhead and come learn sometime in the very near future. Right on. Mm -hmm. Good to hear it, Dodge. Good to hear it. Yeah. Both show. That would oh, be great. sweet. I got to try spearhead. I, everybody's saying it's very fun. Yeah, you should, Will. It's, it's, uh, it plays quick. And I like a couple of the, me the mechanics in it that are different than Age of Sigmar. Uh, this, you know, full size, full scale Age of Sigmar. Okay. Um, you know, it's very similar, but there's a couple of, of key changes that they've put in there that just make for some um, fun decision making that you don't normally have to do in a, in a regular game of Age of Sigmar. All right. Check that out. And what's the duration of that? About 45 to an hour. Okay. Um, it can maybe even be a little bit faster if uh, everyone's down on their units and you know special rules and stuff like that. That's that's what I think is takes the longest mark is referencing rules at this point. 
Yeah. Um, You're talking because, directly to me on this one. I know it. I, can uh, see it. I absolutely <laughs> am, you know, and <laughs> I am um, a culprit. Yeah. I mean, you just don't get a chance to play as often, you know, you got two young ones at home. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in memorizing age of Sigma rules, isn't your priority right now. Yeah. And, and I understand not everyone can be cool. Some people have to raise kids. I get it. Um, <laughs> I started too late. That's my problem. Man. <laughs> yeah, you did too. Yeah. Well, I guess it's never too late, but um, I don't regret being done at 27 with my last kid. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bow, sir. Take a bow. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's one choice I, I made right in life, right? There you go. At least for me. It's different for everyone. But. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No. Kid, kids are cool. Different, different priorities, but I am hoping to get up there. So maybe that's something that would be good for me. Yeah, I think it would be very good for you, Mark, because you can bounce in and out, and it's yeah. also a, a great way for you to get adjusted to ninety percent of the new rules. Yeah, you know, and then uh, after you kind of have that down and are and are comfortable with the spearhead stuff, then then you elevate to the full size game, and you know, and then you're only really focusing on that extra ten percent instead of being overwhelmed by everything at once. Right. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. how's everybody's models looking? Uh, I am on my second drop pod now, and I'm I'm getting nice. close to being done done with this portion of it. You okay. know, I am doing what you call um, assembly line painting here. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a common thing to do when you're painting a unit is to, you know, do the same color or whatever on all of the models in, that you have there that are the same, so that you can uh, be a little more efficient with getting them done. I've been doing nice. about the same thing too, just trying to get a good base coat on these. With, with the Avatar? Yeah. Nice. I'm interested to play against those, Will. Yeah, they're pretty neat. I think I need more of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty neat too. Um, well, I, know, I, I know a guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. A store, perhaps. Um, yeah, I did, that looks oh, really cool. Oh, yeah. I did all my base and layering. Will's still going. How many of these guys you got, Will? I, I got like four. <laughs> nice. Yeah, those guys are really cool. They kind of got like a cat cat body. Yeah. I'm going with I'm trying panther colors is what I'm, I'm nice. trying to start with. Battle nice. panthers. Yes. Maybe I should do green with orange stripes. Little right? pan panthro. Panthro. Yeah, make it battle cat. Oh, oh yeah, I, see. I, see oh, I, like, I like that. You're the I master of your own it. universe. Do your I thing. Throw bag. Uh, but yeah, I did my layers, my base, my layers, and I did a little wash up on them. Um, so now the next thing to do is some some highlights. I went a little old school style. Um, nice. Kind of deviated from the box art, but not too crazy. But not too crazy. Don't get too crazy so, on here, you guys. So, Mark, what's what's your uh, blooded's name? Because he's one of your character models. Yeah, I've not named him yet. What? Are you hmm. waiting for him to do something epic in a game before earning his name? I think we should. Like, uh, yeah, Will is the king of that with uh, with his kill team models. He introduced me to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Straw. Remember? Yes. Give yeah. us the... Give us the story of Straw. Straw. Um, so my first, when I first was getting into Kill Team, um, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to find a game of it anywhere in town, but I found a place. I was doing a tournament. So my very first games of Kill Team were a tournament that was at, uh, at Pandemonium in Detroit. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. you, you took you made a drive. Okay. Yeah, it was a trip. Um, but I, I got out there and I was playing um, Imperial Guard. So mm -hmm. I had, uh, and Kill Team in those days, you could get a lot of special weapons on Imperial Guard because they weren't very good at shooting. Uh, and one of the guys, I um, I called him Straw because I figured he got the plasma gun and the plasma gun can blow up in his face. So he pulled the, he short, the short straw. straw huh? Yeah. Nice. And game three was against Harlequins. And oh, diesel. Yeah, almost my entire team was uh, was broken, scared, running away, except for Straw. He made every armor save refused to break, refused to die, killed everything in front of him. So he became the last straw. The last one. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. 
so here's where I'm at with my dragon. I don't know if uh, we want to drop the overhead on this one. Oh, let's drop it like it's hot. Bam. Bam, bam. Oh, that looks great. <coughs> Listen to my surprise. That looks great. No, I like the two tone. Yeah. That looks really nice. Yeah, I so, put um this uh distinguishing slime glow effect mm -hmm. or, oh, or okay. um, from yeah, the yeah. War Paints Fanatics uh, effect yeah. line. Um, because right. I want them to be breathing out like a um radioactive acidy looking thing. Very distinguished looking. Yes. Very demure, very distinguished. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you have a distinguished snort coming out of there. Yeah, yeah. always. Put your what phone. What were you gonna down, say, Jeff? I said, put your phone down. That's what I said. Uh, Spending too much time on that thing. <laughs> no, I said, what made you go with green? Um, I feel like a lot of people painting it are going to go with what's on the box. They're gonna go with that red dragon look, you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do that. Okay. So. You trying to be your own man. Be my own man, yeah. So nice. What I what I'm really hoping too is that I'll, we'll see some like, um, maybe a black dragon or some of the other chromatics. Mm -hmm. But right. the the flame effect or the breath weapon effect that comes with it looks like looks like this. Oh, neat! And oh. to me, it looks more like it could be a big acid splash just being blown, you know, breathed out. So, well, that's cool. It'll look neat when it's done, Rick, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Real neat. I'd push my glasses up if I could around. Neat. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. uh, I've done a number of dragons for a friend of mine for his, his Age of Sigmar army, and uh, mm -hmm. they've been a lot of fun to paint. Uh, it allowed me to really experiment with some of the new um, uh, airbrush paints that I've acquired in the last mm -hmm. year or so. Nice. Um, so, you know, anytime that you have um, a new project, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, play with some new products because you're not trying to to make it match something that you currently have in your in your uh, repertoire. Yeah. I, and I've seen these dragons and they look phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't it's say Jacob I stuff, right? It What's is. that? Yeah. Those are Jacob's. Jacob. Yes. Jacob stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Yeah, the dragons. I've always enjoyed painting dragons, but I'm a. Cool, I like painting yeah. monsters, anyways. Yeah, yeah, monsters are super fun. Uh, yeah. any, anything that's organic is tends mm. to be a lot of fun. Oh, and uh, I just knocked out drop pod number two. Nice. nice. So only five more to go. All right. <laughs> are, are these going to be utilized this weekend or? No. 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 Okay. I don't have no time to play nothing. I'm running stuff. That's right. You got your own babies. That's right. Yeah. And sadly, I'll take all the lumps. I'm not going to be able to be there. There's a family wedding. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, happening. They're, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Mark, because I wasn't going to let you out of the show without giving you some a hard time about not showing up. <laughs> I know it kills me. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad it's killing you. You got to drive my parents down there. Yeah, it should be killing you. You should be very regretful that you're not coming to oh. your, your local gaming convention. And right. you should be uh, so upset that you're going to make amends by volunteering next year to help out with stuff. <laughs> I will I will volunteer mm. again. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Yeah. There'll be, uh, there'll be some more shirts in the... Guilt trip worked. Graphic Check. design in your future. <laughs> All right. Now, what can I guilt willing to doing uh, well well he's all going to be doing vanguard work for for conquest well, that, that's true so yeah. will are you are you helping run that at all or are you just lucky enough to be able to play i get to play this time Very nice cool. all right that's that's excellent that's really nice that michigan has a very strong uh vanguard community for a conquest yeah i think we're one of the few that has uh more than one vanguard like we have regions that they're separated out for instead of the, for the state. Really? That's very interesting. I've heard from sources that Michigan is um, like the hotbed of conquest sales. 
Like it's a it's a bigger selling item here than just about any other state, if I heard correctly. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but that okay. that tracks. There was so, a good number of people from Michigan at Gen Con when I did yeah, that tournament. Right. But there's also some folks from down south, which was kind of nice too. Oh, that's cool. accents. Yeah, that's very cool. So I am headed to uh, Greece in November. Really? Yeah, we're uh, my wife and daughter and I um, are are heading to Greece for a couple of weeks over Thanksgiving. Really great. Yeah, and so uh, we're going to be spending a number of days in Athens. Mm. So uh, one of my goals while I'm in Greece is to stop by Parabellum and say hi. And I, I just yes. want to check their facility out and mm -hmm. uh, see their design studio or whatever it is. I'll probably be very underwhelmed uh, because <laughs> Games Workshop does such an amazing job of having like Warhammer World and all that stuff. And I don't, I doubt Parabellum is in, in that spot yet, but. Um, I still want to come by and check them out and, and see what they have to offer. Challenge accepted. I, just, I just heard challenge accepted um, from across the old pond there. Yeah, right. <laughs> now that's super cool. That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun to go on a, on that kind of trip. Um, yeah, are you gonna, it should be very cool. Are you going to find uh, some time to you know maybe go to Sparta? Um, it's on my wish list. I'm not sure because uh, we're also going to Albania, which is uh, okay. is to the north and west of Greece. It, it borders mm -hmm. Greece to the on the northwest portion, right. um, okay. which is the opposite direction that Sparta is. Sparta is in the the southeast from Athens, mm -hmm. um, and it's also on a different island. Mm -hmm. So a trip by water will be required in order to get there, or a flight, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure if that's in the cards or not. Um, okay. My awesome wife is doing most of the, the detail planning. And I kind of nice. put it on a thing like if we can pull it off, it would be cool. But if not, right. I'm not planning it out, so I'm not going to complain. I was going to say, if you do find yourself there, obviously, mm -hmm. we, you know, wearing a hoplite shirt and getting a picture would be cool. Oh, one hundred percent. But that's anywhere in in Greece, you know. Right, yeah. Hoplites were everywhere, not just Florida, yeah. But right, um, right. Though I will be wearing Michigan State gear as well, I'm sure. So I don't understand. Yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I'll explain it to you later. All right. Cool. <laughs> is this so one what, of those bees travel from flower to flower kind of explaining, or is this a different thing? <laughs> <laughs> so. And that's all, folks. No, I'm just kidding. So one of the, uh, I will say, one of the inspirations for this dragon, though, was mm -hmm. um, I recently watched the um, Godzilla 1 or whatever it was called. The, Zero? Uh, yeah, Godzilla Zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just, you know, when he gets all energized up before he hits his, his breath weapon, it's kind of a bit of way, you know, the green and that the greenish glow even though i think his is more of a blue his energy glow is a blue yeah um, that's your inspiration there yeah i mean godzilla I mean, is such a great a great creature right no he definitely is a kaiju should i be talking about this guy's cape like that like i i've jumped on to conager now because the other guy's drawing and that's so like his cape was black but now i'm making it superman red it couldn't be much redder <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the red cape. Yeah, right. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, it pops real nice. What was your, speaking of Godzilla. Yeah. What was your favorite non-Godzilla monster? I mean, King Kong is the next one, obviously. Okay. Right? Because uh, Kong and I are probably distantly related in some capacity. Um, I have seen your Kong impression. It is scary. Thank you. you know, so. Yeah. The arms, you get the arms going. Yeah. And we're fortunate the buildings around here aren't that tall. Right. Really yeah. Full I, I, rampage. <laughs> yeah, I just grab some random young lady and go, uh, go to the top and start swatting biplanes. <laughs> biplanes are super, you know, common. Common here in Michigan. Place. Yep. Actually, they are more common than you think. <laughs> There's like a lot of like, uh, aviation is like a huge thing here. Like just hobbyists. Yeah. Yeah. 
There, there are a lot of airfields around. That's for sure. Small ones. Yeah. yeah. When I worked wow. in Ann Arbor, I would drive by the uh, the the college's experimental airfield every day. Oh, that's cool. You can see all sorts of wild stuff there. Every year they had a uh, uh, meet the pilots pancake breakfast kind of thing on a one Saturday, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Well, that's wild. Dare I say maple syrup? Oh, absolutely yes. <laughs> what? I'm going. <laughs> meet the pilots. Well, right. and you can get your pilot's license there. Like, if you can get instruction there for your own pilot's license if you want to get one. Oh, oh all right. That's kind of the, like part of the introduction. Of, field. Comes with one free uh, jug of maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> maple syrup and a pilot's license. That's yeah. right. We got you. You know, uh, if you uh, travel down 127 towards Jackson, uh, as you get about three quarters of the way there between Lansing and Jackson. <laughs> Uh, the east side of the road, there's a uh, aviation community. And oh, wow. they all have these houses, and the, the back of the houses all line up on a, on a, air, a grass airstrip. Mm-hmm. And then all of the houses have uh, airplane hangers as garages. That's wicked. That's pretty cool. My my old manager was actually friends with that, that community. Is he had a, uh, oh, cool. a paraflyer. Yeah, like a parachute with a big fan, and he would use that to to fly around. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Until yes. you crash. Right. We call it John All right. Denver. All right, Google. Where's our flying cars? <laughs> yeah. Right. You get a parachute and a big fan. Then you're no judging. way. Release Michigan. the energy. Michiganders can't merge as it is, Rick. How are they going to do it when they're in a plane? Ooh. Well, what you hope is that you're an early adapter and you don't have to worry about a lot of people. Right. Yeah. And when it does come time where everybody has one, you know, you're you're old and don't really fly around anymore, I guess. It's uh, Jet- Jetson's time. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. I was flying down the highway because, you know, there's a lot of construction mm-hmm. everywhere with Kentucky. Oh. Road construction, Michigan. Road oh, Kentucky. Michigan? Construction? Construction? Yeah. In front and, of our uh, door, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad they're getting fixed up. I guess, but it's, it's like months. it's like never ending. The past 20 years, right? And so, oh God, yeah, they've got those things that are the dividers, a cement divider, right? And then they've got those like green, whatever. I guess blinders. I don't know, but they they're tall in your car. But if mm-hmm. you're, they're just like, they feel like they're in your peripheral, just going zoom 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 zoom. Yes, the whole time. right. And yes. if you're driving for a few hours down south, back up, whatever. It's like nauseating the amount, and it's just like there's there's no room if you know like you're saying like your six inch margin to the left, and you're kind of like into the wall there. Mm-hmm. So it's like I was thinking, what if we were to fly in flying cars? Oh, hello! But you still had to, uh, you know, stay within a straight line with all these people, like Jetson style. You know what I mean? People still, right? You right. still would be crashing. Hey, um, Will, can you do me a favor? Yeah, what's up? Can no you favorite. look up the age? Of the Jetson family. What do you mean? Like how, the age, when the cartoon like, happened, or, or no? Um, like how how old numbers? was how old was George Jetson and Judy and well, uh, Elroy was about in Astro years or no? And there 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 should be a oh. thing that tells you how old each one of them is. I've never thought George of Jetson is thirty eight. James so Jetson George, was born. What's that? So George Jetson is thirty-eight. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Jane Jetson was born in September twenty-third, twenty twenty-nine, and she claims to be thirty-three years old. In the so first five year, five years younger. Okay. Claims um, to be a player. Judy is fifteen, and okay. Elroy is six and a half. Six so and Judy, a half. Okay. So Judy is how old? Sixteen. Six, Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So she's. How old would that have made uh, Jane when she had Judy? Seven, 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's some uh, fitting. It's so funny. The that's future a is a little less there. enlightened than we thought. Yeah. Now, back to the GT. We got We got about 15 minutes left. So let's talk about the future. Okay, let's talk about the future. What are your um, hopes, goals, and aspirations for the GT? Well, um, so we do have uh, an interesting situation coming up uh, after this this year in that um, 
the current ownership group is in a position where um, all of them have much busier lives than what they had um, 12 years ago when we started this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of our members is now the, the district attorney of Battle Creek. I think it's about, yeah, Battle Creek. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And he was in law school when we started this thing, right? You know, right. Um, was, did he different. do that for Flint too? Or he, am yeah, I... he just... He just left Flint and is now in Battle Creek. Okay. Um, you know, and uh, one of our other members uh, was a Finnish carpenter, and now he owns, you know, a, a very successful uh, construction company here in Lansing, you know. And so, you know, we're busy people. You know, mm-hmm. I I went from being a normal computer geek and, uh, you know, a network engineer, and now I'm, you know, the director of my department. You know, so – you know, mm-hmm. we're all in much different, different, busier spots than what we were. Right. So uh, the crew that owns it now uh, is not interested in um, carrying on. You know, they, they felt that mm-hmm. they've they've accomplished what they've wanted to accomplish with the event. And they are ready to pass the torch to uh, somebody else. So. Um, Rick, you uh, as as the uh, head of Thunderforge Studio ha- Studios has. Mm-hmm. um express interest in, in taking the event over and uh, seeing where it can go from here. And we are, you know, we were, as a group, we were happy to, to accept your offer and pass the torch on to you. What? Uh, so it's going to be uh, transferring hands to uh, Thunderforge Studios. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So starting in next year, it's going to be uh, a, a different team running the event. Um, the majority of uh, people involved now, uh, we'll probably be staying on in in various lesser roles uh, to to help the event and make sure that it it maintains its success. Uh, and I I will still be pretty heavily involved in the event uh, because Rick and I do a number of different projects together. Um, so uh, he's asked me to be heavily involved in the event going forward, and I've I've accepted. And mm-hmm. uh, we are currently in negotiations with the Lansing Center. Uh, mm-hmm. We are already penciled in for next year, which we will be uh, announcing those dates uh, after this year's event, um, probably a couple weeks after or so, yeah. so that people can get uh, get us uh, penciled in on their calendars so they know when to request time off and stuff for next year. And uh, mm-hmm. so what this means for the event, I mean, you'll probably have as much to say on this as me, Rick. Um, you know, if you're a current attendee, you're just going to see you know, a lot of what you're used to seeing, plus maybe uh, a little more, you know, yeah. we're, we're talking about adding some uh, new events in the realms of uh, like some card games and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so we will do our best to not uh, negatively affect uh, our current uh, style games that we have going on. We're, we have some plans to uh, get some additional space and uh, spread people out as much as possible so that no one's uh, stepping on anyone else's toes and that yeah. uh, we can continue to have the same space, same quality type event that what uh, our attendees are used to, but also mm-hmm. uh, expand it with new game types, uh, new player types so that we can make it uh, bigger and better and a uh, cooler experience mm-hmm. for everyone. Yeah, I, I agree with all, all that you just said. That is uh, that is the plan. We and there's a lot of things that we've already mentioned in the, today's episode. Uh, talking with Jeff about things that they currently do that we will also continue to maintain with, like you know, come in, if you want to come in and just watch what's going on, shop with the vendors, it's still going to be a walk in free event. Um, I think that is probably one of the most brilliant things I've learned about this particular kind of convention through you guys, Jeff, your team, and also at the Adepticon. Uh, mm-hmm. community as well i was just like what but I, <laughs> but I see that it works right um right. and so that's one of those wheels or things you just don't you don't change it's not flat don't change it right yeah so and of course the you know charity uh events and charity uh stuff that is already going on will continue we may add a couple more as well as we grow sure sure you know? um yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be interesting to see 
where we can take it and bring more tournament play to the community uh, beyond what it's currently at. Yes, and, yeah, that'll be cool. I mean, there are definitely some um, – one of the, the great things about being affiliated with uh, Thunderforge and Hoplite Games yes. is that it's going to greatly in- increase the exposure of the GT to different gaming groups that the GT didn't have exposure to previously. Right. You know, and like what I mean by that is like, uh, for example, you know, we had never been contacted by anyone who plays Hero Clicks. Uh, to right. to hold a hero clicks event at the at the mm-hmm. GT right, but uh, yeah. we have a, a hero clicks community at Hoplite Games, so yes. you know it's it's uh, highly likely that going forward hero clicks will be involved because you know now we have mm-hmm. access to that community. Um, yeah, for sure. So you know that you know having that, um, you know access to all these different types of players who play all these different types of great games. Uh, it's going to be something that's very new to the GT because, because mm-hmm. really at, as it is now, if we weren't approached, right. we're not running that game system. Right. Cause you know, we, we, are not actively shopping for, for new events. You know, right. you know, what we're looking for were those, you know, community leaders who were interested in running a bigger event, but really didn't have the resources or know how on how to do it, right. you know, and then we could step in and, and fill that gap for them. Right. You know, give them the venue, give them the audience, give them the space, you know, all that mm-hmm. stuff, you know, and then that's how we've added things over the years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like you said, this, uh, the synergy of the store, the, the, this kind of content that we do here. Hey, thank you so much. Um, uh, Velociraptor. It's good to see you. Um, having, you know, doing things, synergistically bringing uh because we get a lot of people coming in here that aren't like um your typical gamer right off the bat they see some stuff Mm -hmm. they get like they get interested and they're like and next thing you know you know they've bought all of conquest and painted it in a week right 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 right. yeah (laughs) hey matt what's up bud (laughs) right yeah (laughs) so you know uh the store being able to cultivate communities around the games that the convention will be highly involved in is also right. an amazing opportunity for, oh, for, for everybody, all of it, the community, yep. the store and the convention. So, and the city 100%, of Lansing. 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, this, and you're not kidding. I mean, you, you say that and people might go, yeah, right. But no, you're, you're, you're 100% correct. Uh, you know, and you know, you and I sat down with the Lansing center last mm-hmm. week, you know, and you know, they mm-hmm. had a lot of great things to say about the Michigan GT, you know, they were, yeah. Uh, they, you know, were talking to us about, you know, how uh, valued of an event that the GT is, you know, because mm-hmm. we do bring people in from out of state, right. you know, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, we're only probably pulling, you know, 15, 20 percent of our attendees from the Lansing area. Right. You know, almost, you know, 80 percent plus is coming from, you know, more than a half an hour drive away. Right. You know, and that also means, you know, that many more people staying in the local hotels, renting Airbnbs, um, you know, you know, attending the to, restaurants. Yeah. Going to yep, the strip club the across yep. the street. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I mean well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Omar's loves us, right? You know, yeah. I'm sure they do. Uh, <laughs> but I know Brody's Chop House does. Oh, yeah. I mean, talk about Target Brody's, Demo, Brody's. right? Yeah. Yeah. If you want a good steak dinner, man, Brody's right there. Yeah, well, it's an amazing steak dinner. Not even good. That, that place is just fantastic. That's right. need a reservation, though. I had to yeah. I get reservations with my wife for our anniversary. We went to a restaurant. Oh, cool. oh, nice. Super nice, good. nice. Yeah, Ooh. super good. You know, and one of the other uh, really cool things that we can share, Rick, because I'm sure this is going to happen, uh, is that next year uh, the, the room format uh, for the GT is going to change. The last right. couple of years, uh, we've been – competing with another local company who uh, also holds their their uh, fire truck training uh, like in the weeks surrounding our event and so uh, okay. since they rent more of the Lansing Center than we do you know we uh, we couldn't get the uh, ball or uh, not ballroom but the um, the hall B in the Lansing mm-hmm. Center because they they had it there's a big right. fire truck parked in there so there's nothing we could have done mm-hmm. about it so we were splitting our event between the ballroom across the hall and right. Hall C. 
And so uh, they, because, you know, they heard that we were unhappy with them competing with us, have chosen to move their event to a different type of time of year. We we threatened them repeatedly and they finally backed down. Um, <laughs> Firemen are known for that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they are cowering and, and shifting their event to like mid-September, which completely <laughs> frees us up uh, in that we there's currently zero competition in the hall mm-hmm. of, in the time that we're there this year. Right. So next year, at the bare minimum, we will have uh, two of the three halls uh, in, in the big room. So it will be a, a singular event again, which I'm very excited about because mm-hmm. um, even though it is a lot louder and a lot crazier, it does have a lot more energy when yeah. you have everyone in the same room. So, yeah, so we're going to be back uh, all in one room, we'll at least B and C, if, mm-hmm. and we're even, we're even flirting with ABC. So we'll see, we'll see what happens yeah. and what kind of deal the Lansing Center will offer us. Yeah. To, to, to take the whole thing. Yeah. So no yeah. promises, but we like the idea. Yeah, for sure. We just got to figure out how to monetize it in, yes. the, in those yeah. bigger spaces. The, the, economic, the economics have to work. Yeah. Um, also, sadly, economics are economics. And mm-hmm. uh, we got a great deal in 2001 in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, they are not offering great deals anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> right. The price is going to go up a little bit, and so yeah. uh, sadly, that will mean uh, probably a little bit higher prices for our attendees as well. But but we will keep that as minimal as we can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so lots of good exciting things to come. Lots of good exciting things have happened this weekend. Is going to be amazing, and there's going to be so much good camaraderie brought together in that gaming community that the uh, GT has fostered over the years, and. Uh, I'm really excited to be a participant in uh, bringing Hoplite there and the paint and take and stuff that we, that we're known for. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be great. Know, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you are in the Lansing area or know, know anybody in the Lansing area that if you're watching this now or later on while you're painting your miniatures, uh, let them know about the Michigan GT. You can also check it out at Michigan GT.com. Uh, so check, uh, go and check that out. You can see all the cool stuff. It's going to be super fun. Looking forward to it. I hope yeah. You know. Also looking yeah. forward to see all you guys. If you see me there, stop by, say hi. I'd love to chat with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah so on that note, we have come to our time. And uh, one last time, if you're watching and you haven't hit that heart or that bell yet, uh, to follow and get uh, notifications for uh, Gen Con TV, please do so. And if you are so inclined and have the capacity to do so, go ahead and subscribe. Every little bit helps. You can also use your free subscription from Amazon that you get if you're an Amazon Prime member. And uh, like I said, every little bit helps bring you amazing content through Gen Con and Gen Con TV. So uh, subscribe if you can. And uh, other than that, you know, share it with your friends. Join our Discord. And check out Hoplite Games' website at hoplite-games.com. Not slash dash. So very cool. On, so on that note, I'm Rick. I'm Mark. I'm Jeff. Thanks for having me. We'll see you. (laughs) Yes, absolutely.